Today we're going to be looking at the Centaur class. Uh, I know you Yanks will be calling it the Centaur, but uh, here in uh, Britain we call it the Centaur, so that's how I'll be describing it, so uh, yeah, you better just uh, reconcile yourselves to that. It was designed by Adam Buckner for Deep Space Nine for the Dominion War as a, one of the background ships for the flying around the station. And then it was actually after that, after he made it, uh, Gary Herzl uh, then asked for it to be in the episode um, with the uh, Jem'Hadar fighter. So it wasn't actually intended to be in this episode, and actually it caused it quite a bit of bother in terms of scaling and design controversy. The intention was originally for it to be well, given that it's built from Excelsior components, to be about 380-odd metres. But in the episode in which it appears, A Time to Stand, um, it's against a Dominion bug ship, which is very small, and it's not that much bigger. And so that gives you a much smaller scale, and it incorporates a Miranda component, the uh, torpedo pod, and if that was scaled appropriately to that Miranda component, that would make it only... 210 meters which isn't very big at all and is very incongruous with the fact that all the other components are excelsior so there's a bit of a size controversy there but really i think it's a bit of fuss about nothing it's um very clearly derived from the excelsior and i think works very well in law that way so we just kind of ignore the fact that the torpedo module that's taken from the Miranda is a bit larger than it would be. But that's its uh, IRL story. Apparently, Ex Astra Scientia uh, argues that Adam Buckner agrees with the smaller scaling, but um, I, I don't think that really works. And it really just confuses the whole issue. I think that as a general rule, you should, you know, whatever the majority of your parts are, you should scale according to that. And then anything that's out of scale should be um, that should be viewed as the exception, not the rule setter. It's also worth declaring now um, that I'll be covering a lot of the ground that Triangulum covered in his episode on the Centaur, um, but I hope to give a different spin on it. But it is a similar story. In universe, though, it was obviously intended uh, to complement the Excelsior class, similar to the Miranda is to the Constitution, a derivation. It was originally planned to be going into service about 2285, but that didn't happen. Um, the Excelsior had an. Uh, the problems of the Excelsior's Dicky engine are really very well recorded, and that really through a spanner in the works for the development of a whole line of ships that was going to be developed from the Excelsior. And it's not that they didn't want them, they definitely did. You've got to remember, at the time, there's still a Cold War with the Klingons that could turn hot. There's a lot of tension, and they still want the modern-most ships available. Uh, fortunately for them, the Klingons are having their own problems of this time. So that really slows up the development of the Centaur. Come 2290, and the Excelsior is finally getting into service proper, its problems have been resolved, and um, Kitama happens, and then there's not really a need. The, the, the requirement for the Miranda class and, you know, similar such ships has always been to kind of boost numbers with a, you know, cheaper version like Cruiser. Well, after the Kitman, they didn't really see the need. You know, it was very much expected that because of the de-escalation of tensions. And the fact of the matter was the Klingons weren't going to be posing a threat again for a very long time. So that really um, threw another spanner in the works in terms of developing derivations of the Excelsior class. They weren't really that bothered. And they were instead more committed to... Starfleet was instead more committing to just upgrading the Excelsior, and that's how we get the Excelsior refit, the Enterprise B, and so on and so forth. And that goes on really well into the 24th century. So you don't really see a Centaur prototype really developed until 
22.99 really very late and almost immediately it is beset by problems similar problems to the excelsior but even worse it's not just that it has a dicky engine it's that it's really too small to house said engine and it's about too small to have anything if it was just going to be a fighting ship it perhaps wouldn't have been um so much of a problem but they uh weren't really interested in that anymore they would much prefer it to be um a multi-role ship and frankly it just wasn't going to be that and never was and so because of that they it really became a bit of a ugly duckling the black sheep of starfleet Instead, they just kept going with the Miranda again. There's plenty of them already in, in existence, and they could upgrade and tinker with that to their heart's content. So, uh, the Centaur doesn't really see much development, and um, they run a few trials throughout the 2310s and 2320s, but um, it doesn't really come to much. They're building, already they're building bigger, and they're building ambassador and all of its derivations so everyone really thought that it had kind of missed its chance and the few prototypes there were were just put into mothballs they weren't even deemed for the service in the uh, third rate fleet but they never really saw much service beyond cargo running and patrol and it would eventually go into mothballs now later after the battle of wolf 359 So, obviously, Starfleet is looking to build some new ships. That's really quite far in the future, and they've actually been badly decimated. They've also finally realised that the Miranda is out of date. That then leads them to start reactivating the Centaur. If anything, just to to really hold the line and um, tie them over while... um, you know, new ships are being developed because, at the very least, it's it's a little bit better than a Miranda. I mean, there's a ringing endorsement. But um, it sees it starts to be brought out of mothballs, what few there are, and some are used as experimental test beds. And they take the refits quite well. And, and they were initially quite surprised, but really, it shouldn't be that surprising. They were based off the Excelsior, and the Excelsior took plenty of upgrades over the years. So. Really, it's not surprising that it too would do quite well with modern upgrades, but it brought it up to quite a capable standard. So they were they weren't looking at really replacing it or doing any mass production. They just updated uh, the few ships they had at the time, twenty or so. But um, come the outbreak of the Dominion War, and they really are looking then at playing the production game then suddenly it does go into production because there's still plenty of Excelsior parts and they need Excelsior caliber ships. The Excelsior is decent enough as a mid-range cruiser and so having a more light cruisers, especially with the threat of the Jem'Hadar fighter, the uh, Centaur is actually pretty good for swatting little bugs like that. So um, in that way, it became quite... um, quite an important part of the fleet it's quite unique in that respect but it uh it would go into production for the dominion war so nearly 75 years after initially introduced it's only then actually getting a proper production run and and it does quite well out of it it um really starts to fill the ranks of the miranda and that's kind of where you start to see starfleet's performance really improving as they uh replace those decrepit old uh, Mirandas, they start replacing them with um, a little bit younger and spryer Centaur. Much, I mean, just looking at it even then, it's just a lot more uh, sleek and uh, agile, even though it's actually a lot bigger. So it actually made a quite a comeback in many respects, despite a pretty troubled development. It was really quite a a swine of a development and whether you blame that on the the ship or the fickle nature of uh, bureaucracy is anyone's guess but um, nevertheless it finally managed to get service sea service and uh, carve out quite a quite a niche and uh, quite a reputation for itself so it's quite impressive in that respect of managing to 
make such a comeback even so late into its life. In that way, its uh, silver years are perhaps its best years. <laughs>